This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Chapter 1. Evil. Evil is directly experienced and directly intuited. A young woman is beaten, an old man is mugged, a child is raped, a terrorist rips a plane apart in mid-air, a great nation bombs a civilian population. Those whose minds are not bent by personal or societal madness immediately respond to such actions with justifiable anger. You do not make abstract calculations in ethical philosophy when you see a baby being beaten. At the most fundamental level, evil is not abstract. It is real and tangible. This direct perception of evil is the most important thing. But standing back to reflect on the general nature of evil is also valuable. What is evil? What do evil actions have in common? Philosophers have traditionally identified three kinds of evil. The first is moral, evil that occurs when an intelligent being knowingly and deliberately inflicts suffering upon another sentient being. This category excludes the surgeons inflicting necessary pain on a patient. The issue is not physical pain, but suffering, which involves a conscious knowledge, anticipation, and dread of pain, without an understanding of any good reason why one should be hurt. The second kind of evil is the natural, the suffering resulting from the processes of nature, such as cancers and tornadoes. Some argue abstractly that natural processes should not really be called evil, but this is an evasion for we perceive them directly as such. Further, natural and moral evils overlap. A child may starve in a famine resulting from a drought, but if I could have saved him or her had I been more open with my bank account, is the evil natural or moral? Further, if any intelligent being is responsible for the cosmos, then the suffering that occurs in the cosmos is that being's responsibility, and again, moral and natural ills converge. The third kind of evil is the metaphysical, an abstract concept that will not much occupy us in this book. Metaphysical evil is the necessary lack of perfection that exists in any created cosmos, since no cosmos can be perfect as God is perfect. Evil also comes in different orders of magnitude. Some evil is personal, as when an individual murders a child. Some evil is transpersonal, as when a mob lynches a victim or a government bombs a city. There seem to be no limits to transpersonal evil, for we are now risking the entire human race and most of the life of this planet with our nuclear arsenals. Transgeneric evil may also exist. If intelligent and morally flawed beings exist on other planets, then evil extends beyond humanity. Finally, Evil may also extend beyond the transgeneric to the cosmic. The human willingness to menace the entire planet with destruction in order to oppose whatever nation or group is currently defined as the enemy may reflect the will of the devil himself, the prince of darkness, who consciously chooses to destroy and ruin the cosmos to the extent he is able. Inflicting suffering for the sake of suffering, doing evil for evil's sake, the devil is by definition the personification of cosmic evil. Few educated people today take the concept of the devil seriously. Some relativistically deny the existence of evil altogether. Others admit the existence of evil actions, but not of evil individuals. Still others admit that persons can be evil, but limit evil to human beings. Historians and anthropologists know, however, that the unexamined assumptions of a society tell us more about the society than they do about the truth of the assumptions. Often people assume that in the modern world the idea of the devil is old-fashioned and therefore false, an objection that assumes that the modern world, however defined, has discovered some metaphysical truth, however defined, that makes the existence of the devil less likely now than it used to be. In fact, the devil's existence is no less likely now than it ever was. Society's assumptions, styles, and prejudices have changed, and will change again, but the underlying problem of evil remains the same. Therefore, the real question is whether the concept of the devil makes any sense. Did it ever? Does it now? 
will it in future.